Good day everyone, and I hope you're doing well. In this video, we'll be going over how to get the UI elements that you're clicking on as game objects into our scripts. So for example here, you can see that when I click on each of these different UI elements, I'm going to be logging the game object clicked. So for example, the text here, when I click this, it says text from the text game object. If I click here, I get the red image. If I click here, I get text and button because the button element is made up of the text and the button itself. Okay, so we'll be using the new input system, but we'll only need to dive into that for the mouse module. And as always, if you would like to jump straight into the code, there's a link in the description for you. Okay, so let's start off with our empty scene here. We're going to switch to the new input system. And currently, as of May 2021, you will have to do this step manually. You have to manually install it and enable it. But if you've already got it running, then you can you can skip this step. Fortunately, we can install it from the Unity registry with relative ease. So let's go ahead and open up the package manager here, window package manager. Okay, so now we switch our packages drop down here to the Unity registry. And looking for the entry called input system, which is here, and click install over here at the bottom right. If that's already installed for you, that's great. And once that's finished, it will restart Unity for the changes to take effect. So I let that just go through. Yes, we want to apply it. Perfect, okay, that's installed. Now, let's check that the new input system is active. You don't need to do this, but it's nice to know where to look to double check which input system is active. So if you go edit, project settings, and then in the player category here, you scroll down and you look for active input handling and you make sure that is on the new one. Okay, so now I'm going to create one of each UI element so you can see the results of interacting with all of them. But I will pause the video here quickly so you don't have to watch me create my uh, failed UI masterpiece. Okay. Cool. Okay, so now we have a nice selection of elements here. Now I know they don't look the same as what I showed you earlier, but that's because I literally just made these right now just to make sure that what I'm giving you is not gonna break. So I wanted to make sure that I'm not giving you some code that works on a perfect scene, but then when you do it from scratch, it doesn't work. So, oh, and just to note, don't delete this event system object here. Otherwise the UI will stop working. Okay, now we have a selection of UI elements. Let's create a game object for our mouse script to live on. So for simplicity, let's call this one player. And we'll create our script to handle this clicking. So let's make a new script and we'll call it UI interaction. Now you can ignore the SCR, that's just the prefix I use. Now let's attach this to our player game object here. And let's open it up. So first, let's quickly add the namespaces we'll need in this script. So you want to add at the top, make some space here. You want to, I'm just going to paste these, but you'll want event system, input system, and UI. Let's get rid of these. Cool, okay. So first, we want to check if the mouse is being clicked. So in the new input system, we can go just like this, mouse.current dot left button dot was released this frame so i'm going to put that into an if and this will return a boolean value for us to use now you see here was released this frame we could also use was pressed this frame however if the user has clicked the mouse down but they decide to move the cursor out of the way and release the click somewhere else most likely because you know they clicked the UI by accident, we don't want to still trigger an action. So using was released this frame gives us a kind of confirmation that the user is intentionally clicking the UI. Okay, next we'll create a function to house our clicking functionality. So we'll call it uh, get UI elements clicked. Cool, so I'll just create this here. 
and I'm sticking this inside the update function here so you can see it running in action. Okay, so we're going to be setting up a raycast for this. Now I have been trying other methods for you, like on point to click or on point to enter functions and getting the clicked element that way, but I find them to be a bit unreliable and they don't seem to work with all types of UI elements. So that's why I'm going with the raycast. And there's also been cases where you'll be in a game and there'll be a lag spike or a frame jump and your script will then fail to detect uh, a pointer entering or exiting a UI element. So then obviously the script will fail. So for the most reliable method, I would recommend raycasting. So because we're raycasting onto the UI and not colliders, we'll be using the graphics raycaster. So every time you create a canvas here, it will have a graphics raycaster. Let's just go to that. Now uh, you can see here, it's already got a graphics raycaster component attached to it. So we're going to make use of this in our script. Now feel free to create a new graphics raycaster component anywhere you like on your player if you want to. So let's go back to our script. Let's bring our canvas into our script. So we'll say public game object uh, UI canvas. Save that just so the script updates. Oh, I've got an error. What does it say? Mouse does not contain left button. Interesting. Let's check the script. Ah, so you can see here, this L here should be lowercase. Okay, let's go in here. Cool, error's gone. So we'll go to this object here, UI canvas. I'm going to drag this in as I find this to be more reliable than finding the canvas via a string. Awesome, so now we have direct access to our UI here. Let's grab the graphics raycaster component from it. So we'll go graphic raycaster and I'll call it UI raycaster. And then we'll add this to our start function, UI raycaster equals UI canvas dot get component graphic raycaster like so so we're adding this here in our start function so we don't have to keep getting the component from the canvas every single frame now for our raycast we will need two things we will need a pointer event data object to set our current mouse position value onto and a list to store the raycast results so We'll make those two here. So first, pointer event data, and we'll call this click data. And then we'll have a list of raycast results. And we'll call this click results. So I'm calling them click data and click results just to visually pair them together. OK, so I'm also going to put these here into the start function, so click data equals new pointer event data object and you have to give it your event system dot current and click results equals new list containing raycast results cool so by putting them here in the start function i can make these accessible to the whole script and i don't have to keep giving this a new object every frame I can simply just clear out these results each time and populate it with a new set of results. So that's why I'm putting that there. Okay, so this is where the mouse click position comes into play. So when this function here is called, we want to grab the mouse's position and update our click data. So to do that, we can go click data dot position equals mouse dot current dot position dot read value. And also when this function is called, we want to clear out the raycast results from any previous raycast. So we can do what we can do here is we can do click results dot clear to give us a nice fresh list. And now to perform the raycast itself, so we go to UI Raycaster, that's UI Raycaster dot raycast, and we'll give it our click data and our click results. Close that off. And 
there we have it for the most part. This raycast will return the UI elements that it comes into contact with. Now, if we wish to see the game objects from these results, we can iterate through this list. So let's create a for each, and we'll say for each raycast result, result in, click results. I want to get the UI element, so game object, UI element equals result dot game object with a lowercase g and then for debugging I can go debug dot log UI element dot name and that should print it out to the terminal. So I'll save that. So let's see if we have any errors from that. Yes we do, we have one. Graphics Raycaster does not contain the definition for Raycast. Oh here, I've forgotten a capital letter. Okay. Let's go back to our game and it is time to test this. So let's click play, make sure we're on the console. You're trying to read input class, but you have switched. Okay, let's find out where this is coming from. I think it might be on the event system. Ah, here we go. Okay, so sometimes this doesn't automatically switch for you. This is the old system here. So when you click replace, it will switch to the new input system for you. So now that's done, I can clear that. Click play again. Perfect. Now, click. I've clicked the panel. I've got the panel game object right there. Click the text. Got the text. The image. Image. Scroll view. Yep. Uh, button. Drop down. Input field. Toggle. Slider. Slider. Well, scroll bar. And text. Yep. Now, the panel here, I recommend if you go into the panel, and you turn Raycast target off for panels. So then you can use them to house loads of different elements. That really does help. But if you want to keep that on, it's up to you. Now you will notice when you do click on some of these objects, say the button, you will get two. You'll get the text game object and the button game object. If you only want the first one that you've clicked on, you can use the first result in the results list if you wish. Or you can implement your own logic to use these results in whatever way fits you best for your project. Now, so this is a one-click thing. You click, you get the results. If you want to get the results every frame, so it's like a click and a hold. Let's go back to the script here. So if you wish to get the clicked UI elements every frame, as if you're holding the mouse down, we can replace this. This bit here was released this frame. We can replace it with is pressed. So let's do that quickly. Is pressed. So this will allow the raycast to run every single frame as if the mouse is being held down. So now if we go back, go to the console, click play. Now we hold down on text. As you can see, it's going text, 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 image, Button, 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 panel, 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 awesome. So that might be helpful for you if you want to click and hold rather than just a one click thing. And there was some confusion, so I'm going to create a 2D and a 3D collider just to prove that it does in fact ignore 2D and 3D colliders. So let's create two game objects. Let's create a cube very quickly and a sphere. We'll give this, this one's got a box collider, great sphere collider. Actually, let's get rid of this one and let's put 2D box box collider. Here we go. So we've got 2D box collider and a 3D sphere. So I'm just going to move these quickly in the scene. Okay, so now we have our cube and our sphere here trolling the scene. Let's click play. Let's go to the console. Let's see our output. So we've got panel. We've got image. And as you can see, nothing is happening for these two, 2D Collider and 3D Collider. So it's purely just UI. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to jump back to the script very quickly. Uh, okay, so let's quickly give this function a doc string so remember what it does in future. So I'm going to say, get all UI elements clicked in order of depth. First detected is first. There we go, that'll do. And there we have it, this is the uh, final code.
So uh, thanks for going through this with me. I hope it was helpful to you. And please like and subscribe if you'd like to. And I will catch you all later. Bye-bye.